It's a beautiful day today, so what does that mean? Obviously, another test ride. So today we are taking out the Royal Enfield Himalayan Scram 411. As always, a big shout out to Motocorsa over in Tunum for lending us this bike. And this is their lovely array of demo fleet. If you are in the area, make sure you get on over and take some bikes out. But before we take this out, let's roll the intro. One thing I think you could definitely say that Royal Enfield have nailed is that retro style scrambler feel to this bike. I really like the way it looks. And the fact that it's got the dual purpose tires on it ready to be taken on a little bit of off-roading, I think is spot on. One thing you definitely do notice as soon as you sit on this bike is it does have a low seat height. Coming in at 795 millimeters, I'm six foot and I've got both feet flat on the floor. So if you're a shorter rider, this is definitely gonna be one, one of the contenders for yourself. In my opinion, you wouldn't really wanna be sat on a motorway with this because it just about got up to 70 there with my carcass on it. So this type of bike, you definitely wanna be hitting up dual carriageways and if you can get on those A roads and those B roads that's where this bike will hold its own it's not got the biggest CC engine and on top of that it's only got a five speed gearbox this wouldn't need a sixth speed because it just hasn't got enough juice to get it there but speed is not something that Royal Enfield are looking for they're not searching for it on this bike Coming on to the riding position and the seating position. Okay, so the seat itself uh, is really quite soft. So there's definitely a lot of cushion there. Unfortunately, there are some vibrations coming through it into my backside, but there's not much else we can do about that. Seating position wise, the seat is curved slightly towards the rear where the passenger uh, will start towards sitting. So it kind of forces you to sit uh, where it wants. There is some room from a crotch going towards the tank. So for a shorter rider, you have got a little bit of movement uh, that you can shuffle your bum around. Feet wise, they're in front of my hips and just behind my knees. So it's quite a comfortable, natural seated position. Top half, I'm pretty upright, but it is definitely a comfortable handlebar uh, position. I'm not limp forward. I'm not reaching for the handlebars. So I've found that on some bikes is that you actually you find yourself reaching where they've placed the seat. But you don't get none of that on this bike. For a price tag of £4,700 on the road, you can't complain. Bikes nowadays are easily averaging £15,000. But you go back 10 years, those £15,000 bikes would have been worth £10,000. So the fact that Royal Enfield have still managed to keep the price of this low is definitely something to be said in today's market. Ooh. I do not know what is going on. Oh. Looking at the handlebar, it is all pretty simple. On the left hand side, we've got our passing light. We've then got our low beam, high beam, indicators left to right, and a horn. Right hand side, kill switch, start switch, and then hazards. Like I said, they've managed to keep the cost low by not adding all the fancy gizmos and the rider modes, things like that. Bike like this, you don't need that stuff. 
Will you be my friend? The brakes are okay, they're nothing special, but but with the power of this bike, you don't need strong brakes. I think the brakes absolutely fine for this bike. What are we doing, sir? What are we doing? Ah, a red light. Good shout, good shout. Oh, the power off the line. Look at that full throttle. So one thing I am noticing, just going around these corners, the ground clearance of this bike is 200 millimetres. And whilst I'm going around, my feet are dragging going around these corners and these roundabouts. So that's just one thing to be mindful of is you may start catching the foot pegs if you are going to start leaning us in a little bit more. Obviously this bike is not just built for the road, it is built for a bit of off-roading. So standing up position, it's pretty comfortable. I'm not leaning forward, I can still touch. Obviously my levers with my fingers. It's kind of a nice comfortable position, got a slight bend in the knees. Would be pretty good to do a bit of light green laning on this just to see how it handles but i don't know if we're going to be able to do it today and the other problem is finding the green lanes let me know in the comments box below what do you use do you use abr i adventure bike rider do you use trf or you just do old school os maps how do you find your green lanes back roads, on your A and your B roads, that is where this bike will perform beautifully. Definitely going to start to struggle on dual carriageways and I wouldn't want to take this on the motorway. I'd feel pretty vulnerable sat there pinning it just to stay at 65, 70 miles an hour. Yeah it may go up to 75 but it ain't comfortable, it ain't enjoying it. It does handle pretty nice though, especially it's on the old uh, dual purpose tyres. I found this with the Touareg, the Aprilia Touareg, and that had dual purpose tyres. <sighs> and that's something that's quite important. So if you are going to be doing 75% road, 25% off-road, you don't want novelties. You don't want something that's like... <laughs> you don't need that in your life. As you could probably tell, there is no rev counter. There is just the old school speedo. And on the inside of that, we do have a little digital screen. You've got a fuel gauge, the time, your gear, and your mileage. On the right hand side, one thing I do like about Royal Enfields, even though the prices are pretty good, they do include this little uh, extra, which is a turn by turn navigation uh, screen. So it's nice to see. Ah, oh, the curl's going for it. He's bottled it. As I mentioned, nice thing to see. It does have the fuel gauge and not just the fuel light. There's some more expensive bikes like the Kawasaki ZX10 that does not have a fuel gauge. So talking about fuel, this does come with a 15 litre tank, which it isn't the biggest. Because of its engine size, this bike will be pretty economical anyway, even with those 15 litres. Obviously there is no wind protection because there is no screen at the front. So the wind just hits you nicely across the front. And it's not going to cause any disturbing buffeting on the helmet that some smaller screens do create. There are five different colour options for this bike. We're on the yellow. They've got a blue, a red, a grey and a white and red colour scheme. So nice to see you have got a few different colour options to pick from. And the price across those stays the same, unlike some manufacturers that will uh, add a few extra hundred pounds for a different colour scheme. I did say earlier it handles quite nicely and that's only going to be accelerated by the weight of this bike. Coming in at 185 kilos without fuel, Add in the 50 litres, 200 kilos, fueled up, good to go. And that is pretty light in today's standard. A lot of other bikes coming in 40, 50 kilos heavier than this. 
the next thing that's going to affect the handling are going to be the wheels so we've got a 19 inch front wheel and then a 17 inch rear wheel it's definitely a theme i've seen across the royal enfields is this range of bikes the himalayans the classics is they're cheap and cheerful they're not layered with all the technology that a weighs the bike down but b bumps up the price they're a good price they do what they say on the tin they're a reliable bike and i think especially some of these like this one they look good as well they do what you need it to if you want to be taking this off-road and do a bit of green lane in and you're worried about dropping it why not do it on a bike that's under five grand brand new because the part's going to be a hell of a lot cheaper than doing it on a, a tour egg that's 10 grand or a 1290 super duke adventure that's 15 grand so i applaud royal infield for sticking to what they know works for this type of bike this ranger bike and because of that there's not a whole lot to talk about this is going to be a short video as always like i said at the start of this video thank you very much to motocorsa for lending us their demo bike as you can tell they have got a nice selection on hand for you to go on and test ride if you are in the area of julianum head on over and throw your leg over one of these if you have enjoyed this video please make sure you like and subscribe to the channel helps us out over at dsr keeps us pushing to make better and better content for you guys but as always in the meantime ride safe